All right, Russell. Um, one of the, the first things I've found being a senior coach is the amount of advice that you get. It is just <laughs> phenomenal. So here I am, first AGM, as Russell pointed out. This is a sheet that I was given when uh, I was told, I, first of all, I had to come. And then I had to speak at the AGM. Mark, quickly summarise the restructuring of the footy department. Give us a summary of pre-season training, the game plan, the development of individual players. Give us a timeline for your expectations. Touch on the leadership group. And can you start to lighten up a bit? Everyone thinks you're a little bit grumpy. <laughs> then once you've done that, introduce the eight new players. You've got three minutes. <laughs> So, first thing I took from that is the board either didn't care for my game plan or didn't understand it. Now, but in summarising all that, where's, where's Kobe? I met Kobe on the way in. Where are you, mate? Righto. Kobe's over there and he's one of our... Stand up for me, will you, please? Kobe's one of our younger generation demons. And I had a chat with Kobe in the foyer. And uh, very enlightening. Now, Kobe fills me in and he's starting school tomorrow at Wesley. And Dad's brought him along to the AGM and he said, listen, oh, he didn't say that, but he said, um, look, a bit nervous about starting school, don't want a late night, uh, is this going to be long? <laughs> Fair enough. So fairly direct like me, I, I, okay, I like this young fella. Pretty much Kobe just wanted to know, are we going to be okay? He said, it's going to start soon, how are we going to go? So I said, fair enough, I can answer that for you, Kobe. This is what I'm going to do. Right, Righto, pre-season, as you can see from that DVD. Yeah, we've challenged the players. We set out young, new coaching group. And as Cameron's already pointed out, the facilities that we have at our disposal and the players have, world class. Absolutely no question and no doubt about that. We requested from the players an elite work ethic and elite compliance. So I can summarise pre-season training by explaining to you that over the last four and a half months, that's exactly what I've seen. They're a passionate group of players who have shown terrific compliance and a great work ethic. Pre-season is an interesting time. It doesn't matter what sport you play or it doesn't matter what club you play for. Right, pre-season training is really tough. And it's the season for all the, in some cases, big statements. So it's a season of hope, and it's also the season of reality. Now our hope is that I can say exactly what I just said. All right, and our, our reality is that we're one of 18 clubs doing exactly the same thing. In saying that, by the time we get to round one, I'm confident that the players would have done enough work to give ourselves every opportunity to compete. That's what I can give you. In terms of the game plan, I'm not quite sure who put the sheet together, but clearly I can't and won't go into specifics of the game plan. But there's not too many secrets in the AFL. You'll have your own opinion of the game plan, I think, by about halfway through that first quarter on March 31st. <laughs> now, this is the, the lightning up section. When you do have your opinions about the game plan, feel free to send them into the club. As Schwabi said, we now have a performance structure, number of new players in the footy department. Most things hopefully will get filtered by the time they get to me. Make sure they go to either Josh Marnie or Neil Craig. <laughs> They'll read them and then filter on and give me what I need to read. Development of individual players. At 46 young men, eight are new. I reckon, boys, we've probably changed your footy world in the last four months. There's no right or wrong in that. It's just different. I come from an educational background, have a philosophy that footy, it's just a part of society. The age these guys are at and the level they perform their chosen craft is about university level. For, for me, a footy club, it's a footy university. We've got experts in their chosen field, 
who take charge of these guys. And they're all at different levels. And there's been long days. And in some cases, it's a, it's a little bit unique, a little bit different, that we're asking them to be there at 7.30 and they're still there at 5.30. And we have little classes that run for 30 minutes and they do five or six each week. The reality part is, new coaching group, new game plan, first time they've seen it. I can't set timelines as to how long it will take, where we will be after six games or 12 games or one season. I can't do that. But I can guarantee you that we won't die wondering. We have very clear, set ideas on how we want to play and how we want to educate the players. The leadership group. Right. For the la probably the selection of the leadership group began four and a half months ago. And difficult and tough, because half a dozen players there were in last year's leadership group. And I respect the fact that they're sitting there going, why doesn't he just get up there and give us the leadership group? Right, it's a thorough process. We, as a club, are going to take as long as we possibly can to make sure we get that selection right. We will stick to the timeline of announcing the leadership group prior to the commencement of the NAB Cup. It's not going to be something that will be selected in, in a quick fashion, obviously. We will get input from the players themselves, coaching group, other key members of the footy club. And when there is something to announce, we'll announce it. One of the things that uh, we've been running with is high performance through high integrity. So when we've got something to say, we'll let you know, but it's not far away. How'd I go, Cubby? Summary? Happy? <laughs> All right, good. I don't know how I went with the lighten up thing. Everyone still thinks I'm a bit serious, but we'll work on that later. <laughs> now, I get to introduce the new players. Do, do I do that? Righto, excellent. Now, do they, do they know what they're going to do? They come up? I think so. Do they? Yeah, they come up. They come up. Righto. Who is first? Mitch? Get up. Right, Mitch Clark, new player. <laughs> we'll be wearing Guernsey number 11. <laughs> now, we're pretty pleased to have Mitch on board. Uh, according to the papers, uh, he's a ruckman. I reckon he's a key forward, so that's where he's going to play, and we'll see how he goes. We, we've got a specific role for Mitch to play. He's training pretty well. Tom Couch, where are you, Tom? Up you get. <laughs> Strong inside midfielder. Possibly the largest thighs on any rookie listed player in the <laughs> AFL. James Magna. <laughs> Possibly the biggest arms on any rookie listed player in the <laughs> AFL. There's a bit of a theme there. They're quite, uh, quite big gentlemen. James Seller, who will be wearing Guernsey number 30. Not quite as big as themselves, but <laughs> tall, big, right, can play, mature age, all that type of stuff, a bit of a theme there. Jai Sheehan will be wearing Guernsey number 50. <laughs> Connection with Jai. Geelong person, went to the same school. Bit of an issue though, he didn't play footy for the school. Haven't quite got to the bottom as to how that happened. And for a little bit of time there leading into the pre-season draft, we weren't quite sure whether Aaron Greaves was his ex-coach or his current manager, but he's on the list, <laughs> which is important. 
Rory Taggart will wear Guernsey number 43. say about you, Roy. Right, strong, will develop into a very big body. And great first impression. At the draft camp where the, the players get filtered in to some of the coaches and you, I don't know, you try and put them under a little bit of pressure and you set them challenges and and uh, I asked Rory to, um, to send me an email. I said, mate, if you're serious about being drafted, find out my email address, send it to me, I want you to follow up, uh, give me some answers to these questions. And then by the time Friday came around, and we, I'd done that to about 100 kids, I actually forgot that, that I'd asked Rory to do it. So I got into the club on Monday morning at 8am, opened up the email, and there it was. Uh, gone away for the weekend, thought about his footy, had an answer to every single question that I asked him, and some of them were challenging. Uh, we then followed up some work with him, and first impressions go a long way. We've got big hopes for, for Rory to become another inside mid big body player. Josh Tynan, Guernsey number 46. Right, Roy, uh, Josh has made a big impact on his teammates. Uh, they're fairly keen on his hairstyle. <laughs> I'm not a massive fan, but different generation, that's all right. Um, one thing we do, I do like about Josh, fairly hard at it. I saw him, his uh, footage playing in the TAC Cup. Now, uh, they used to use him as a key defender and he used to back back into the big boats. He's pretty hard at it, country kid, like him, work on his hairstyle. He'll play at some stage. <laughs> Lee Williams, he will wear Guernsey number 51. Strong, aggressive forward line player. Again, first impressions. Hadn't spoken a lot with Lee. Thought he was a bit quiet. He got up at a... Sparks, your place. At the introductory or a barbecue for the new players. And spoke to a group, not quite the size of this, but it was fairly sizeable. Knocked him dead. Really clear in what he wants to achieve has not come through the elite player pathway, has done it the hard way. Big impression on us. Body shape completely changed in two months. Skin folds down, time trial results down. And again, what we like about him is he's not gonna die wondering. We've got eight new players at the club. We've got high hopes for all of them. Bit of a common theme. We believe that they are highly competitive AFL players. Uh, our expectation of them is to compete, train hard, and give us everything you've got. We've got the confidence that we've got eight new players to the club that can do that. So welcome, boys. Well done. <laughs>